better than your currency. Splurge your millions, buying houses like Monopoly. Fucking nine to five, man, the money is a joke to me. Buying cryptocurrency, my money in the privacy. I make it rain dollars, the watch me disappear. I'm so fly, man, I'ma need some men again. Hey guys and girls, welcome to this week's episode of the No BS with Birchie podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Nathan Birch, and this is a show unraveling the truth to the facade of the 21st century. We're now X in the Matrix and waking up to motherfucking reality. Today, I want to talk about the reality of property investors out there. So we see in the news a lot of people, like tenants at the moment, going, oh, these greedy landlords and all this sort of stuff, right? Um, I guess the question is, is like, who are these landlords? Who is the face behind the people that, who's the face behind the property that you're renting, right? You go onto realestate.com, uh, you see that there's all these properties up for lease. You might be living next to a rental property. Who is the owner of that property? And I think that the landscape in the future may change dramatically over the course of the next decade. But the people that own these properties generally are just mums and dad investors, right? They might have one investment property, two investment properties. It's their nest egg, it's their superannuation, it's their retirement fund, it's what they can sell to pay off their mortgage, whatever the case may be. As an investor going back 20 years ago, buying my first property, 21 years ago now, buying my first property, um, you know, when I look back, there wasn't many people that had a multiple property portfolio. There certainly wasn't many people with three or four properties. There wasn't people with like 10 properties in their portfolio. I never knew anyone that had any. There was never any news articles about anyone like that. And um, I think like, when I look back, the, you know, we really started the, the first push of building large property portfolios. And if we look at the statistics out there now, um, there's less than 20,000 people with six or more properties in their portfolio. Um, who are these people, right? The, the wealthiest 20,000 people in the country, what do they look like? Uh, do you interact with them in the street? And uh, you know how can you become one of them? So, who are these people now? Um, I've looked at some of the clientele that I've dealt with over the last fifteen years here at Be Invested, and some of those people, um, you know, have have come from you know just mums and dads, right? So a lot of the people that I've seen specifically years ago, just people that have bought a property, four hundred grand, doubled to eight hundred grand. They've got some equity. They go buy themselves a few investment properties. They get hooked. They want to buy 10, 20, 30, and they build up their position. Um, there's a lot of people out there specifically that have followed the YouTube videos. And I have people nowadays apparently taking my videos from back in the day and cutting them into TikTok videos. I'm not even on TikTok, right? But apparently people are seeing these TikTok videos out there. But um, I feel like that there's a wave of young people um, that uh, you know want to not have to work for the next 40 years, which was where I came from, right? I didn't want to have to work 40 years in a job that I hated. Uh, so I just hustled and you know built a plan around building a portfolio. So there's a lot of the young people out there that are in their 20s and 30s that are building wealth. They're not wealthy people that have come from big amounts of money. Um, I don't think, I think that 98% of my investors that I deal with are just everyday people. I've got, you know, I do have some celebrity people and stuff like that. I do have some people that have come from big amounts of wealth. I've got some people that have big businesses and stuff like that to help out. But the core people that I help out are just everyday people that you'd see down at your shopping center, down at the sports field, down at you, that you could be sitting in the desk next to your work, or could be the tradie that's coming to fix your house, right? And I think having strategies is very important for each of these segments of groups. Over the last few years, um, you know, I always said you want to live life on your terms, right? You want to be able to create a life where you don't have to go to work to earn an income. You can just have passive income coming through, but you have to work hard in order to get that there. Uh, I think when we saw issues coming out of 2019, 2020, we all know what happened there. Um, we all know, you know, the world changed at that point. I think a lot of people came to me, and I don't know why, but maybe it was how I spoke. Uh, and how I do spoke, my view on the world is very different because I don't need to be controlled by money or, or a job or anything like that. I just say shit as it is. But I had a lot of people come to me that 
you know, whether it's from religious groups going, this ain't right, what's happening with the world right now, we need to find a solution that's going to build us an income stream that's not from our core, um, or whether it be someone that's been working in their job for 20 years, a hardworking person, and then suddenly they've got no job, their business has gone broke, that they work for, their employers sacked them, whatever, they've sat on a train, gone to work, like at 7 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock at home, at night, for 20 years, 10 years, whatever, and suddenly they've got no job. They're like, well, I need to find an alternative and I'm not gonna allow this to happen to me ever again. Or the big amount of people that I had come to me, people like, I ain't gonna be told to stay in my house. I ain't gonna be told to put things into my body that I don't wanna have in my body, right? Uh, that sounds a little bit sexual, but I'm not talking about it like that. I'm talking about, you know, other types of uh, things entering your body that you, you know, that people didn't want to. Right? And I feel like, that over the last few years, people are like pushing back in the in the system, and it's like you know, that's that's a freedom fighter. There's someone going, "Hey, I'm standing up for my rights." Right? You you wouldn't normally expect that, right? Would you, as a multi-millionaire property investor, that those people would be out there and wanting to be a part? They're the people doing it. Um, I'm finding that there's lots of people that, and there's lesser people in this space, right? The lesser people in this space, are people um, that are in there's a lot of them but there's a lot of people that don't do this right so mining right mining segment i look after so many miners when i say miners like those that work in the the mining industry not i don't look after miners i'm not a child care center um so uh, miners that, that that we look after with their portfolios and help them build wealth they might be earning for a period of like two years, three years, five years, 10 years, 150, 200 grand. Like how long do you need to be working in a fucking camp, right? I've, I know because I own infrastructure in mining regions, right? I own mining camps and facilities which look that contract to the mining companies. Like some of these properties are like a donger. They live in shipping containers, right? With a fucking bed, like jail would be a better option, right? They go, two weeks on, two weeks off, 10 days on, 10 days off. They're working 12 hour days, they're away from their family. The stuff that they get the town, there's nothing to do in the town. When they're not working, there's just, you know, it's, it's lonely. They come back, the kids are growing up, they're growing up faster and faster. A lot of people in these positions that are minors, uh, you know, there is a lot of bad things that happen. They drink, they fucking hate their life, and whatever, but they're earning more money than a CEO or more money than a lawyer or more money than you know a high end uh, a doctor or whatever but what are they doing with it right and um, you know I have so many miners that come and you know be a part of you know wanting to be a part of what we do because they're like hey I've got a buddy and you know he's he's been working with me for four years and I can see that he's got you know 15 properties now and I've got nothing and I'm just sick and tired of having to you know, do this, this long hours and, and all that sort of stuff. So a lot of referrals in those mining communities, very, very big. Um, whilst you've got that active income, like if someone can build a property portfolio on 150 grand at 15 or 20 properties, you know, if they can build it with, if they've got more income or less income, or whatever, like there's certain windows and if you're earning massive money in a mining job today you should be doing something with it because you know that your body can't do it you mentally can't do it it's not going to be a 20 30 40 year lifestyle if it is it's going to be a very torturous one so you know something to look at um, one of the big things that i've seen especially over the years it's very consistent um, is soldiers and people from the military um, good hard-working uh, people that are defending our country um, going out there they might be discharged because they've got a busted knee or a, a foot that's it, I'm not talking about people with disabilities I'm talking about people you know your body can't keep up your your workhorse in your 20s for the military maybe into the early 30s but then you can't keep pushing your body like you could into your 30s 40s and and so on so um, I have a lot of uh, you know military and defense uh, people which have come on board over the years um, and built out you know really nice property portfolios to be able to support the income and be able to retire from would you think that the person that's defended your country is the owner of your investment property of your rental property you're living in uh, we don't know they're just 
average, everyday, hardworking Aussies. Um, you know, people in young professional jobs, people in middle-aged professional jobs, people that are close to retirement. They're not all, the, the clients that I have that are baby boomers that come to me and they're 65, the 65 year old is, you can still buy property. There's, you know, we're not um, saying we can't, but there's a lot better chance when you're 25 to build a property portfolio than when you are at 65 because lending becomes an issue. You might have a million bucks of equity when you're 65, but you ain't got the servicing. The bank ain't going to look at you. They might lend you a half a dozen properties, but you know to get that larger portfolio, they are just everyday people. They're not people that have been born with a silver spoon in their mouth and are you know driving around in Rolls Royces and all that sort of stuff. So. Um, yeah, like, are you one of those people? Are you one of the people that are sitting there going, fuck, I can't do it or whatever? It's like, those people I've just talked about are very, like, that's the bulk of, you know, who we help out. We've got tradies, doctors, professionals. Like, if you've got a job, you're between 20 and 60. Like, that's the active, you know, time. Like, the average people I work with is between, you know, 50 grand to 150 grand income like yeah i've got people that are over that and i'm talking like household incomes as well so um a lot of investors that i help out are tenants like they may not even be able to afford a house to live in so i've got i reckon half my clients don't even own the house they live in they're a fucking tenant but they're like i ain't gonna sit here and just pay rent for the rest of my life i might pay rent for a very long time or for the rest of my life, but I'm gonna buy assets so then those other tenants can pay for the rent in my house. Um, you know, and they're rent vesting and building up a portfolio whilst being a tenant themselves. So yeah, there's a lot of people out there that are around us, right? That are all around us. I don't even own a pair of shoes. I unsuspecting I walk down the street, people are like, who's this idiot, right? Um, they don't they don't look anything different. To the next person um, but they've got that it could be your colleague at work right and i know that like i've been very public over the last two decades in sharing my journey and what i buy and what i do and all that sort of stuff and it could be good could be to my detriment right but i know that probably i don't know 60 70 percent of the people that i help out they don't even want anyone knowing that they own like their family don't know that they own investment properties they don't go home until their siblings their parents their cousins anything like that because they just don't want to share they don't want people perceiving them as being different or you know oh you're wealthy you can pay for this you can pick up the tab on that because it does change mentalities of people that are surrounding you so there is a lot of welfare that hasn't been that it's just not out on show. So people that are out there investing, right? Um, are you someone that fits into that category? You know, are you thinking, shit, how, how can I do that? Like literally look around you and think like maybe one out of 50 people around you would own a half dozen properties or one out of 100 people or one out of 200 people. Who is that person? How do they behave? You, you've, if you go into a, 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 a shopping center on the weekend, and they say there's 10,000 people and I bet you that there's like 50 of those people or 20 of those people which have a half dozen properties. What makes them different to you? How did they get started? What did they do differently to you? What did they do differently to the next guy or girl? What are their habits? What are they doing? What are they prioritizing? How do they view money? How do they view debt? How do they view the system? How do they view the world? Because it is a mindset as well. It isn't It isn't just by chance that someone goes, oh, I fluked it, I woke up, I don't know what happened, I've got 10 properties. Like It just doesn't happen like that, right? Like they're, they're habits, they're good habits. Like people say to me quite often, oh, thank you, Birchie, you, you know, you've you've helped me build a portfolio, you got me to 10, I'm so excited with where I'm at, whatever. I'm always like, fucking hang on a second, I didn't do shit, I helped you, I coached you, I nurtured you, I shepherded you to get you there, but you are ultimately the one that has signed the contract, you're the one that's done the deal, you're the one that's parted with the money, you're the one that's um, you know, sacrificed, you're the one that's done whatever in order to get there. I've just helped you and led you and guided you on that front, but they're the one that's done that. And you know, looking at those people that do become successful, I've got people that could do heaps of cool stuff but they never do because 
they're too scared or their mindset's not right or they're not committed or they don't get it or they're too fearful or they listen to their spouse or they listen to their colleague or their friend or their family member. They watch the news. Their opinions scare them. Their emotions fear them. Um, All of that sort of stuff. So what do the successful people do to get there? Well, we've just looked at a few of them um, and they're, you know, key players i think they're key players of people that um that they one other one that i didn't mention of um and a lot of i feel a lot of people do is migrants right people have literally come over to the country they're working hard they're contributing to society and they're like hang on a second the opportunity is here um you know we want to get ahead let's buy some property it's the aussie dream it's all where people go to so they you know they might be coming from a country where buying 10 properties is not a thing. It's not even really a thing here. It's a very small group of people. But, you know, wanting to build wealth, it's a great store of wealth. It's a great creation of wealth. It's a great creation of cash flow and it's a great opportunity out there. So, you know, what makes the next person different to you? What does that person with 10 properties do that you don't do? How can you become that person with the 10 properties? What are you missing? What are you not putting into your life? What do you need to change? How do you align yourself to become that person? They're everyday people. They're not rocket scientists. They're not superstars. They're not celebrities. They're not all of that. So if you want to uh, build a portfolio, you do want help on expanding your position, reach out to us, one 367 925 Email us at admin at beinvested.com.au and share us and like us and uh, follow us on Google Play, Apple Play, Spotify and YouTube. See you next Thursday. Have a great day. Bye for now. I don't care if you do or you don't But what I'm saying is the truth to the reason you choke I've never been a failure, excuse my behavior Keep talking, haters doing me a favor And you're telling lies, I know what they've been telling you I'm the opposite of the Donald Trump of Australia It's amazing, here for the taking My time is never wasted